Hi, I'm Steve Green. Uh, welcome back again if you're rejoining us from previous videos. Um, I've had a couple of requests to do a video to show the different types of form, um, being things like create, update forms, that, and how they impact your JavaScript. Um, so if I look in the SDK, which can be found, obviously if you extract your SDK, there's a, I'll, I'll show you the process. If I go to where my SDK is extracted, which I've done on the root of my C drive, double click SDK, there's this compiled HTML file. If I double click that, it opens the help file. And if I expand out under software development, there's a right client application extensions and at the bottom of that, client side programming reference. And within here, should be able to see a reference to the different types of form which will be under uh, doo -doo -doo. sorry about this um, there should be a ability to see the form list form type list Okay, sorry, yeah, it's under the um, XRM page UI thread because you've got this get form type function. If I scroll down to that area here, we can see the list of the, the available form types that this method or function returns. So there's an undefined, a create, update, read only, uh, which is if you haven't got write privileges, it will default to a read only form. Um, disabled would be for deactivated records, uh, quick create has been deprecated, bulk edit if you multi-select from the home grid, multiple records, and then hit the edit button, that's the bulk edit form, and the read optimize, so within your CRM options, you can opt to, so if I go to file options, this, under the general tab, set the default mode for viewing forms obviously there's the organizational default which can be set system wide and obviously you can have defaulting to a read optimized version that has various limitations um, I found a, a Microsoft blog which is uh, you can see here if you do a search for read optimized forms you'll probably come across this blog and that explains that things like um, JavaScript don't function, doesn't function rather, um, various other limitations for iframes and subgrids. But bottom line is if you've got JavaScript web resources on the form, it, will, it won't load in read optimized version of it. It will always load the standard edit form. But I'll, I'll, I'll put that back to read optimized so I can show you how the JavaScript being present will affect it. So what I'm going to do, if I go to my Visual Studio, open the CRM demo solution we've been looking at before. Take a few seconds to connect to the organization and prepare the solution. So my solution just finished opening. So we can see from the previous videos, we've got the package that deploys the solution to the uh, platform, a plugins project, workflow project, the default silver application that we haven't altered. And then a, the last couple of videos I did was a, a demo silver light controls and then a, a chart control, which was using rest uh, endpoint for retrieval of data. So within our package itself, this is where it contains our web resources and you can see a couple of uh, from a couple of previous videos again what I've done I've took one of the ones from one of the first JavaScript videos I did which had this just this function in I've added some global variables which is these you can see here which is just a, a quicker way to be able to do so if you want to rather than having to do a check on the form type and remembering that one equals a create by just sticking these global variables at the top of your JavaScript library then when you do a check you could say 
where I've said case one, I could have replaced that with oh, wrong place. I could have done that as the check, and it would know that. So it's easy, obviously, to read it in in a, a human readable form rather than remembering what integer equates to what. But for now, I'll just put that back to what I'd done. So I've created on an onload. It will re it'll run this get form type method, and based on what that returns, whichever form it is, obviously it's going to throw an alert to tell us what form type it, it believes it to be. Um, then on the contact, I'm going to do a manipulation of the state or province field, and just put test because I know none of my contacts contain that. I'm also going to show that if you were to actually try and trigger the standard on change event because programmatically altering a field doesn't trigger an on change like it does when you actually physically type in it through with the keyboard so I'm just going to show you that by firing the on change it would behave much like a, a human being sitting at a computer and typing into it and then I'm also going to there's a an alert that throws the ID of the record back just to show you the difference between a create and any pre-existing record form so Obviously, a crate doesn't have a GUID because the record isn't saved yet, but updates and any of the other types, it's a pre existing record. Okay, so I've already deployed that, so I can go to my CRM. I'll just show you that under the contact, if I, well, actually, I'll go to the customizations area, go to the contact form load the main form click on form properties and we can see the JavaScript libraries that we've requested to load with the form some of these jQuery ones are from a previous example uh, to do with indirectly triggering plugins but we can see that update contact library and if I scroll down slightly also on the onload event of the form from within that library I'm calling that form onload function which is this here and if I look within the library it's, or click here and edit library you can see those global variables and then that same form onload function with the manipulation of a field and a retrieval of the ID so if I close back out of all those go back to my main CRM interface so now if I load double click a record we can see it's done the form type method it retrie it returned a, an integer value which equates to an update form as we'd expect and if I OK that you can see the state province then put test with the three exclamation marks which then ran straight onto the final line of code which is this alert which has got the GUID of the record So if I close that, obviously because we did the fire on change, the form is now marked as dirty. So it would, it's obviously it knows it's not saved, but obviously I don't want to save that information, so I'll just leave the page. So if I do the same with a new, you can now see the JavaScript fire the form, get form type method again, but now it's returned obviously a different integer to tell us it's a create form. The state province populated with test but now you can see that the get ID method or function doesn't return a value so it, obviously that could impact you if you were trying to do a rest um, a post to do a create or something to associate another record type you wouldn't necessarily want that to trigger on a create form because of not having the GUID to associate the record to so in your JavaScript depending on what the business logic was you could check to say uh, only do this on an update form uh, or yeah I mean probably only an update form I'll show you the reasons why so I hope that makes some sense that the why well, the create form doesn't have a GUID because it doesn't exist in the database yet so what I've also done is I've deactivated a record I mean I'll well I'll show you the deactivation process so there's only a single record at the moment should come up on this So we've got this A Abid record. 
So if I just take another one, this A Arnold, and at the top in the ribbon bar, we've got deactivate. And OK. So now that's dropped off our active contacts view. If I go to inactive contacts, we should have the two. If I open either one, so we can see down here, state province is now is blank. It's told us it's a dis disabled form, so obviously the user can't alter this because it's inactive. But what you'll see is the JavaScript programmatically is allowed to actually manipulate values. Again, it's throwing back a valid GUID for a pre-existing record. So that obviously behavior isn't desirable, um, which is again why you would probably want to check for the type of form before your JavaScript or in, in case it in an if statement or something to say if the form type response is update do this otherwise don't do it because that's now manipulated a value we can't obviously save the change anyway because it's a it's a inactive disabled record and also if I I've got a another browser open um, logged in as this limited user or obviously I've done it on a different browser type because I can't log in as uh, two different users on my home PC so let me just alter the role so this is the single role I've given to that user so if I go to the core records and contact and take away in the right privileges column against contact I've given them no privileges so if I save and close, go to that other browser, so this is logged in as the other user, go to the contacts, pick a contact, double click it, uh, double click it indeed even. So that should load the jar, obviously Chrome renders it slightly different so you can see it says read only form. And again, the same JavaScript library is registered on the form on load, which is why we're seeing this response. If I click OK, you can see again, it's populated it with tests. So again, the, that behavior is not desirable. Um, we should again be che is checking for the form type. Uh, again, it's returned the GUID correctly. But we should be checking for the form type and preventing, if it's a read-only form, our JavaScript wouldn't, shouldn't be manipulating values. Again, they wouldn't have the privileges to save anyway. So those changes would get lost. And then I've also done a very similar library for the opportunity. The only difference being, obviously there isn't an address one state or province field. So I'm manipulating the description. So what I'll start by showing you is if I unregister any JavaScript libraries So I've opened the opportunity form, go to form properties. I can remove any libraries, obviously that automatically if there was any, if that library was referenced for a function, it automatically removes any event handlers. So if I publish that, that's yeah, just publishing. Oh, it's done what it did yesterday. Okay, cancel. It's the uh, this is the new wonderful IE11 doesn't seem to be particularly robust with CRM at the moment. So let me just publish that again just to ensure it's it is actually published. Just check it did yeah. So it should now have took those changes. Obviously it's reset all my other browsers, so they've all defaulted back to. The original pages um, yep so if I now go to opportunities under sales you saw earlier I, I opted for read optimized versions of the form so if I pick an opportunity this is the read optimized version as you can see there's no ribbon bar nothing can be edited certain things don't render I mean there's no associated records to see these quotes and line items anyway so they're empty because of that Obviously that Silverlight component, the slider doesn't render, doesn't load that web resource. And I could go to the standard edit form by clicking edit. That's the standard form now. 
are now our Silverlight components back working. So what I'll do is customize, go to the form designer, once that loads I'll go to form properties to access the JavaScript libraries. I will register our FSO opportunity library and also on the onload that I did this form underscore onload function. Okay that. Save and publish. Hopefully it won't crash my browser again. Uh, appears not to have this time. So if I just review the library, so it's got the various form types. Obviously it's going to do a get form type method. We've just seen it defaults to loading in the quick create form. So we should expect to see a quick create form alert. Uh, so if I go to opportunity again, close this one down, reopen it. The default, as we've opted for, is the read optimized version of the form. Double click. But now you can see it's defaulted straight to the edit form, the update form, and obviously the alerts fired and the subsequent piece of JavaScript, which is to get the ID of this record. And what you'll see if you look in the SDK, okay, yeah, apologies, no, um, back to the, sorry, the read optimized form where it's got a, a little graphic to tell you that if there's any client side script, it always shows the editable form. So that's the reason because we've reattached, uh, reassociated that JavaScript library and function, it now defaults to. So I think some of these options were put in for future support and in reality things like the read optimized check is irrelevant because in order to do that check you'll have to have JavaScript on the form so it will default to the update form anyway so you would never get this this response um, and obviously I think it's here on 20, uh, 2013 the new one they've obviously changed the forms quite significantly anyway with the new user interface so yeah the final one I haven't done which I just kind of accidentally touched on is bulk edit so if I multi-select several contacts we've got this edit option again the JavaScript library for contacts is registered it's got a bulk edit detection so if it become if it's number six should rep it should present us with an alert for bulk edit form but if I click on edit you'll see nothing happens the state province stays empty we don't get an alert and as I previously accidentally showed you if we look at bulk edit within the SDK Microsoft have clearly stated that events in the form are disabled for the bulk edit form so there are no JavaScript events enabled, there's no support for JavaScript. So again, this is probably something they did intend to use, um, but it's been, the support subsequently been pulled. Um, so again, that bulk edit form detection is kind of pointless because you'll never ever load a form that can support JavaScript to actually do the get form type and check for it. Um, so I hope, that was kind of what the uh, that answered the questions um, for the various form types and the sort of impact you could have from do it. obviously there's a lot of different JavaScript methods um, that things like the get ID that are valid for certain form types they don't throw an exception or an error but you've got to be quite aware of the difference between the create and update forms if you're trying to associate other records to that say that that record that's triggering the JavaScript because if it doesn't have an ID you can't associate. So any uh, thanks for watching and any comments or queries or requests feel free to post them below. Thanks and bye.